So you've got a 2013 Mac Pro and you're thinking of upgrading the CPU. Do you go eight core or 12 core? In this video, I'm gonna explain why this decision is not as straightforward as it might seem and why you can't make the decision purely on benchmark results. But even if you don't have a 2013 Mac Pro, you might find this video interesting because I'm gonna share with you some insights on hidden CPU features. And you're probably wondering why I'm making a video about a computer that is now over 10 years old and it's certainly not gonna be setting any performance computing records anytime soon. Well, the answer is it's because these machines are so accessible now. Prices have fallen down to the point where you can pick up a decent used trash can Mac for just a few hundred dollars. And at that price, it represents good value and it's a nice introduction into the world of Mac. There are workarounds available to get the more recent macOS versions installed and the machine does have some upgradability, CPU as we've said, but also RAM and SSD. And you can even boost performance with an eGPU. I did all of these things with my 2013 Mac Pro a few years back and I made a bunch of videos, but just recently I've noticed a bump in interest in those videos. So clearly there's a new wave of users that are playing with this iconic Mac. And if you've bought a used example, it will most likely have a quad core or six core CPU. So it's fair to say that many buyers will be looking to upgrade. And so hence the question at the start, do you go eight cores or 12 cores? There are a number of different CPU models which will run in the 2013 Mac Pro, and that does include a 10 core version, but this was never a configuration that was offered by Apple. So I'm gonna to stick to the eight and 12 core CPUs that Apple actually shipped in these units. And we should say that only the Xeon E5 version two CPUs will work in the 2013 Mac Pro. You can't use an i7, even though it may share the same socket design. And you can't go to a Xeon E5 version three either. And we should note that the processor we use should have a maximum TDP of 130 watts. The official eight core CPU that Apple offered is the E5 2667 version two, which offers a 3.3 gigahertz base clock and a boost clock speed of four gigahertz. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna have to interrupt myself here because uh, I've misremembered. The official eight core processor that Apple offered with the 2013 Mac Pro is the E5 1680 version two, not the 2667 that I talk about in this video. So the 2667 would only be available as an upgrade option if you're doing the upgrade yourself. The difference between the two CPUs, uh, the 1680 actually has a base clock of three gigahertz and a boost of 3.9 gigahertz. So it's slightly slower than the eight core that I talk about in this video. But just take a look at this graph and you'll see that the standard eight core is still clocking at a higher frequency than the standard 12 core. So everything that I say in this video about the 2667 version two still applies to the 1680 version two. Hope that's not too confusing, back to the video. The official 12 core option is the E5 2697 version two, and that has a 2.7 gigahertz base clock and a boost clock speed of three and a half gigahertz. So the eight core CPU offers faster clock speeds, but the 12 core obviously has the core advantage. Which one is better? Let's start by checking the benchmarks. I took the average of at least three recent results submitted to Geekbench 6, and I only selected machines that are equipped with 64 gigabytes of RAM, since that's the maximum amount of RAM that Apple designed these machines to take. Now it's true that you can put 128 gigabytes in, but if you do, the speed of the RAM drops from 1,866 mega transfers per second to 1,066. And that reduces peak performance and therefore affects the benchmark results. So I'm leaving those models out of these averages. And as an aside, if you don't need more than 64 gigabytes of RAM in your Mac Pro, best not to install more than 64. The eight core CPU then scores an average of 830 on single core, whereas the 12 core model has a score of 709. Not really a surprise, is it, that the CPU with the faster clock speed is going to have the better single core performance? And it's 17% better in this case, which is no small victory. Now that should have a noticeable impact on day-to-day -day computing tasks and should help your Mac feel a bit snappier. But of course, this is a Mac Pro. You want to run Pro apps that make use of all of those cores and threads. So let's look at multi-core performance. The eight core model averages 4,854, whereas the 12 core model comes in at 5,194. And if we do our math, that means that the 12 core is offering 7% more performance than the eight core model when it comes to multi-threaded workloads. 
and that might not seem like much return for a CPU that has 50% more cores. And that's because there's more to this than meets the eye. Remember, the benchmark is showing us the opposite ends of a spectrum. We've got our best single core performance and then our absolute peak performance when all cores are fully utilized. But that's not typically how we use our computers. There's this whole spectrum of use cases between these endpoints and the benchmark isn't telling us anything about that. Of course, the eight core model has a higher boost clock speed at four gigahertz compared to three and a half on the 12 core. But you shouldn't assume that this means that the CPU can boost all of its cores to that speed because that's just not how it works. Intel uses the term available bins to describe how maximum turbo boost frequencies can be calculated. And let me explain this using this eight core E5 2667 version two as an example. So its available bins are three, 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 four, five, six, seven. And the numbers that you see between the slashes here represent the number of bins for each of the processor's cores in descending order. Each bin is 100 megahertz on top of the base clock speed. Now, of course, if you're new to all of this, I might as well be speaking Martian. So let's try and explain this. And I think it's easier to understand if we actually reverse the order of these numbers. So if the CPU is boosting one core, the number of available bins is seven. Seven times 100 equals 700 megahertz. So what we do is we add this 700 megahertz to the base clock of 3,300 megahertz and we get 4,000 or four gigahertz. And that's our advertised boost clock frequency for this CPU. But let's take it another step. If the CPU is boosting two cores, the available bins drops to six. So that's 600 megahertz added to our base clock. And it means that the boosted clock speed for those cores now drops down to 3.9 gigahertz. Carry this on down the line and you can see that from five cores upwards, the maximum boost on offer is 3.6 gigahertz. And here's the boost profile for the 12 core CPU. You'll see it hits maximum boost from six cores onwards and can only offer a maximum of three gigahertz. And at every step of the way, its first eight cores run considerably slower than those in the eight core CPU. And this is just clock speed. We also need to look at the total amount of cache RAM. This is the amount of really fast memory that sits within the CPU to massively speed up operations. Our 12 core 2697 V2 has 30 megabytes. Divide that by the number of cores and you can see we've got two and a half megabytes available to each core. But the eight core 2667 V2 has 25 megabytes and that's 3.125 megabytes available to each core. Or to put it another way, 25% more cache RAM per core. And that is a significant advantage. So you can see that these hidden data points help us to see why the 12 core CPU has only a 7% advantage over the eight core chip. And in the real world, the eight core is probably the better choice. Think about it, you're getting much better single core performance and better multi-core performance unless you're running a task that can use 11 or 12 cores on that bigger CPU. So if it were me, I would pick the eight core 2667 version two, if you can find one. They are considerably rarer than the 12 core models on the used market. And if you're looking to upgrade the CPU in your 2013 Mac Pro and you just want the best all round performance, my recommendation is go with an eight core not the 12 core. You'll want to pair this chip with 64 gigabytes of RAM using four matched 16 gigabyte DIMMs. And if you do that, you'll be getting the best performance possible outside of very heavily multi-threaded workloads, which is really the only use case for the 12 core model. Well, I hope that was helpful or interesting to you in some way. Uh, thanks of course, as always for watching and supporting the channel. And I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.